this because, you know, prophecy is God revealing his truth to us. And there was a prophecy that was um, given over DCC. And God told me to pick it back up again. And I began to pick it up, he said, because there are some things that was in there that is not just for the DCC, it was for the whole body of Christ. And so here's, the, here's, so here's what I want to just share a little of this prophecy so we can go from there. And my message will come from here today. It says, um, body of Christ. How many body of Christ people do I have out here? Amen. Yeah. It says, uh, body of Christ in the spirit realm, God is saying the room has grown too small. We have maxed out where you have been. There is a greater capacity in the spirit realm that awakes you. I hear the spirit saying, come on in to the new place, the new dimension. The place where you were in the spirit realm is too small. You have prayed, you have sang, you have preached and expanded the atmosphere into a new place. Can't stay where you have been. Oh, mercy. You've grown your way into supernatural abundance. Look at this, look at somebody say, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh, oh. And then it says here, don't stop now. This is your due season. The greater is yet to come. Look at somebody say, the greater is yet to come. The greater, amen. Okay, now here, here's what he said He's shifting you from petitions and praying to decreeing and declaring. My God. He's shifting you from confessing to commanding. Oh, Lord. In other words, we praying to God, we're doing this, we're asking him to do that, we're praying, but now we're getting ready to decree a thing and it shall be established under you. Confessing to commanding. Somebody say, well, what do you mean commanding? Well, you know, change your prayer language. Change your understanding. He's shifting you into a new world of commanding. You now have a sword. The word in your mouth. Use it. It's a sword that'll get the job done. A dimension of declaring, decreeing, and commanding the Lord. You can command what he has already commanded. So you're not commanding God to do something, you just agreeing what he said and you just carrying it out. Then said, you are not at a standstill. You can't have God in neutral. Say that one more time. You can't have God in neutral. How many know if you haven't been neutral, you're not going nowhere. God is about advancement. Then he says, I declare, there is an anointing of acceleration. Anointing of acceleration and progress among you. Favor and increase upon you like never before. Here's the last thing. Praise, your praise is an indication of your faith. So in other words, what, what just saying, they're saying that God's Prophecy is not automatic. You have to believe it. Amen. Amen. How many believe God? Amen. Amen. So we have to work on that and we have to go on there. But it says favor is, you know, and increases upon you like never before. And so some things in here we got to understand that the shift. See, what is a shift? Uh, a shift is an acceleration and move to a different place or position. A shift. The Lord showed it to me like this. I used to have in 1991 a Mazda 626. That Mazda 626 was fast. Usually I used to drive around, had a little Pinto, blue Pinto, 78 Pinto. Then all of a sudden I, I moved up to, um, uh, well, this is not important. Let me get to what I'm talking about. But when I went to the Mazda 626, it was not an automatic, it was a stick shift. And in that stick shift, when you move and go in the one and put the on the clutch and uh, you know and go and then the last shift, bam, will take you off to a place you were in neutral or you were standing and you're going slow, but the shift caused you to accelerate to a different place. Speed.
speedily. So God is saying, what is a grace shift? A grace shift eh, is a divine acceleration. A divine acceleration atmosphere change for manifestation. So in other words, the atmosphere will change and you'll be able to receive things supernaturally. The atmosphere, the reason why, you know, the atmosphere, if the atmosphere is a certain way, no matter what, you're not going to receive some things. Amen. The atmosphere is involved. The climate is involved. If you go to Florida, talking about, you know, you're going to sow oranges, it may work, but go to Chicago and try to do the same thing. You got to be in the right atmosphere and the right climate. Ain't nobody talking to them. Well, spiritually, there's something that we do to create an atmosphere. Amen? What is an atmosphere? It is a response to spiritual influence. A response to spiritual influence. Whenever someone in the spirit starts believing God and praising God, set an atmosphere. See, that's why y'all feel so good. You know why y'all feel so good in here today? Because the atmosphere is set with praise and glory and, 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 you know, believe in God. And now your spiritual influence changes the whole atmosphere. And now at that point, at that momentum, at it get to a point, then when you confess and, and the word shift, then that's when God starts happening. Can I say amen to that? Amen. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Look at somebody says shift in the house. And here's why, here's why I'm so excited about this. Because this is something I ain't got to try to convince you. This is something I'm walking in. This is something that the Lord showed me what to do. I really didn't know what was going on, but once he started telling me what was going on, then the atmosphere shifting is understand. You got to understand grace. That's why I've been talking about grace. That's why I've been talking about unmerited favor. Why? Because once you get a revelation of grace, it creates the atmosphere for shift. Once you get a revelation of faith, it causes what you believe to come to pass. So we're dealing with for the last two years, grace and faith. I know some of you want another message. Go somewhere else to hear another message. But right now, I'm going to preach what the Lord told me to preach. He told me to saturate this place with grace and faith. Grace don't mean you did something. Grace means what God did. It's nothing you did. Nothing you put. It's not your performance. It's not your good things you did to cause God to bless you. Grace is all what God did. Grace takes you out of the equation. Grace, independent of you, independent of what you can do. Somebody say, I'm going to fast and move God. Honey, go ahead and eat. Because let me tell you something. God already moved. You know, he's already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, it is finished. That means he was saying, it's already done. That means whatever you believe in for, it's already done. The gospel now can be preached. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. What gospel? The gospel of grace. I'm not ashamed of it, because it is the power. If you want the power to show up, talk about the gospel. And then it says, unto salvation. Salvation is not just, you know, being born again. Thank God for that. Thank God for being born. But if you look at where so trivial, salvation means so trivial. It means healing. It means forgiveness. It means deliverance. It means prosperity. It means soundness. It means safety. It means all of the finished works of Jesus. He said we have that through Jesus. So that, stop trying to get some that you already got. Somebody say, I need to get healed. No, you don't. You need to get Jesus. Because once you get Jesus, you are healed by his stripes. Somebody say, I need deliverance. No, you don't. You need Jesus. Because once you get Jesus, he has delivered us from all bondages. In him, I have what you're trying to get before you get it. It's so good to know you coming from victory to trying to go get the victory. So once you change your mindset like that and that revelation start flowing like that, there's a shift happens and what you came in here with, you don't have no more. Came in here sick, but yet the symptoms left you while you were sitting up in here. 
came in here broke, but yeah, somebody to pull your application next week and you know you ain't qualified for that job. Amen. Some of the stuff we got is because of the atmosphere. And somebody talking about, oh, it don't matter what church you go to. You better hope you go to the right church because you can get that atmosphere set. Because guess what? In grace, you, everybody got an issue in here. But you ain't got to tell me your issue. Just come in the house, lift your hand, and believe God because the atmosphere is set. For you can come in one way and go out of here. Look at somebody says, shift. Yeah. And somebody say, I'm going to say that because I can say this. I'm going to say something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say it. I was struggling. Lord, should I say it? He told me to say it. I said, but Lord, he said, say it because if you decide not to put it on TV, then you can edit. So it freed me. Amen. But I, but I was here a couple of Sundays ago. Amen. When I came up here and all of a sudden I said, there's a shift. And all of a sudden some change in the atmosphere. How many felt that? You know? Well, let me back up and tell you what was going on. Mm. <laughs> that, at the end of last year, we was in a battle because the bank that owns the loan told us because of the economy that we would have to um, um, get you another, we can't hold you anymore, we have to get you another loan because the appraisal um, doesn't match up with um, yeah, the market value. So in other words, they said it, 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 it makes no money and the bank's gonna let you go. I said, just like that? Yeah. So everybody, they was gonna drop us. So we had nowhere to go. They, they tried to get people, banks, to um, take us on, and no one would take us. So um, we was coming in here, and I just kept doing what the Lord told me to do. Somebody said, but why you didn't tell us, Pastor? Because Jesus kicked the unbelief out. I don't know, I don't know where your faith is at. I ain't want to say something and then on Facebook I read about it at 12 o'clock. Because everybody don't need to be in the room when Jesus is in the room working out. I don't want to talk to nobody who might think it not, may not work. So I talk to you later, but right now he only took three back there when the little girl was dead. The rest of the disciples stayed on the outside with all the complaining people because they believed, but they had a little unbelief there. You know? So I ain't saying nothing. I'm just going to keep praying, keep believing God. People don't even know we could be out by tomorrow. But faith is a positive response on what God has already done by grace. How did you respond, Pastor, when you heard that? I responded, I still got joy. I responded, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how I feel. I'm not moved by what nobody tell me. I ain't think about no bank. I ain't think about nothing. Cause no bank didn't get me up in here no way. It was Jehovah Jireh got me up in here anyway. I started preaching to myself. When I was sitting out there in my truck, in my expedition, speaking to the building, when they wouldn't give me a key, where was the bank then? The bank won't know where around. Then, when I came, where was the bank at? When I was in the hole, Hotel, and all of a sudden started with nobody, but God brought everybody by the power of the whole. I ain't got time to worry about what I can't figure out as long as I got King Jesus everything. Somebody shout, shift! So my positive response to come in here, I like everything was all right. Then on top of that, giving going down and all that. But I'm not moved by that because people are not your source. God is your source. So I had all of that going on. Plus 
That's my house. Count on five. <laughs> it had an electrical fire. But even when the fire was in my house, how did I respond? I responded in faith. I was sitting there on the computer. Somebody said, we don't heard this. Listen again. I was sitting on the computer. The Lord said, go home now. Go home now. Go home now. I said, it's 12 o'clock. Go home now. I said, okay, I'm out of here. Went home now, and my house was on fire. I went in there. I was like, man, my house on fire. So I went around there, tried to stove, thought the stove left on. I couldn't even get out with so much smoke. And so I heard some cracking upstairs. And so I called, you know, the fire people to come. My house on fire. Sister P, the house on fire. And so the whole thing, I found out that I got there just in time. Because it was on fire in the, in the, in the, in the um, fire, was the fire, did that to fire muscle? Said uh, it was like 300 degrees upstairs from the electric socket that came out. But here's, here's what they don't understand. They don't understand why the fire usually go up, right? It went up, but just to the ceiling tile and didn't go no further and stayed there like this. So, but the heat was so hot that the whole house was smoked up. Even the hallway, the fire detector was as a crisp. That's how hot it was, just standing in one spot. But I don't understand, on my son's bed, the Bible was still there. Yo, and ready. The whole house smoked up on fire, but the Bible won't touch. The computer won't touch. The bed won't touch. How on one side, protection could be there on the other side of everything. Is in God saved us. And now I'm back in my house now. First they gave us a um, house for a whole year, you know, almost a whole year. You know, pay everything, insurance and everything. So, you know, got some free food from the tanks and everything, crab cakes and everything. So I was happy. You know? <laughs> but I'm just trying to say everything is going on, but I still remain the same. I didn't come in here like, oh, Lord. How you doing, Pastor? Well, you know, my house on fire. Got all our clothes in the smoke place. Mm-hmm, house on fire. We're in the little room, hotel at first. Mm-hmm. Everybody in there. Me and Sister P can't get busy. I didn't, I didn't go do all that. I was in faith. I was believing God. And all that going on, but it did, and then on top of that, the building. Talking about they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna have to put us out. But how many know God would always raise up somebody to use that power? He'll raise up somebody to use that power, influence, and ability to help you. And so, there was a lady in the bank who moved up to high position. She said, they wanted to kick y'all out, but I wouldn't let them. They said, look at their workers. Look how faithful they've been paying. Look at them. And so she created another program, moved us over there where she in charge. Check it out. And now, all of a sudden, told us that they're going to continue the loan and she's going to be over it. You send a check to her. He said, not only that, Pastor, I know you're paying $10,000 a month, but now it's going down to $6,000 a month. Y'all ain't paid what else. Y'all ain't paid what else. I'm preaching up in here. Somebody said, what you say? But it wasn't anything we done. It was a grace shift. Cause look, that Sunday, when I said that, we were in trouble. I said shift, and in the next two days, that's when we got the call. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't ready for me now. Somebody said we in a grace shift. Now, if God did that for us, how do we know he can do it in your personal life? So in the name of Jesus, I now declare something over your life. Uh Oh, I'm getting ready to say it. I'm getting ready to say it. 
Whatever's wrong, whatever you believe in God for, whatever has been on a delay, in the name of Jesus, I declare today that there is a shift in your life. Now, if you believe you receive a change today, right now, on the count of three, give God a praise right now. One, two, three. God is good. I said God is good. And his mercy endures forever. And that's why, look here, that's why when you're going through something and it don't look good, you got a God against unbelief. Because unbelief comes in there, it's contrary to the word, you get to consider, think about, and use your five senses to try to think. Well, I had to constantly fight. The war was in my mind. But I constantly cast every thought down and said what the word said. And some of you who are going through right now who just claim your shift, your shift, you got to know now you're in a fight. The devil going to try to tell you, but it looked the same. Yeah, it looked the same, but it ain't the same. You got to begin to speak those things that be not as though they were. Say amen to that. Every time we turn around, the devil always trying to attack the body of Christ. Leaving this, uh, the, everybody else that don't know Jesus out there in the finale, and then as soon as we try to do right, we're not perfect, but we're trying to honor him. See, like we got to go through this, that come, everything. But let me tell you something. Trouble don't last always. Let me tell you something. You know, it, there's an expiration date to every trouble in your life. God said, I never leave you, nor forsake you. That means I, I don't care what you've done. I don't care how many mistakes you made. Don't you give in to the trouble that hits your life. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can even ask of faith. You ain't start living yet. You ain't know what, who you serving. God said, did you read the memo? Did you see how I brought out Israel at the Red Sea? Did you read the memo? Did you see how I jumped in the fire furnace and became the fourth man in the fire? Don't worry about it. Just keep giving me praise. And I said, Every word won't drop to, to the ground, he said the word. And I said there's a shift in your life. That means there's a divine atmosphere change for manifestation. That means I dare you to pray now. I dare you to speak to the mountain now. I dare you to act like it's already so. So you got to understand that the spirit of faith means the attitude, you know. That person has a good spirit about themselves. That means a good attitude. You got to have an attitude in faith. Everything will be handed to you on the planet. You got to stand sometime. You got you to grab that thing like a bulldog and refuse to receive no. Refuse to give up. Refuse to quit. Refuse to be depressed. How can you be depressed if you're thinking on what God done for you? Your depressed days are over. Some good is about to happen to you. Look at somebody said, some good is about to happen to you. Yeah. And here's what I like. I like this. Because see, what, what the devil going to do now? Some of you who ain't praising God that much, you know what he doing? Telling you, well, you know, you know, this ain't for you. You know what you did. You know that you're not perfect. 
Now you know what you said. But see, you got to understand, tell the devil, it's not what I earn. It's unmerited favor. That means unearned and undeserved. Now if you got a problem, take that up with Jesus. He said it's by grace through faith, not because I cross every aisle. I, it's not about you. He took us out of the equation in the new covenant. The old covenant, Deuteronomy 28, they had to keep all the law, all the law. Then they would get blessed. The blessing would come on them. If they miss any of the law, they had to kill an animal to cover their sins until the next year. But under the new covenant in Hebrews 8, God said, I'm not going to make a covenant like I did in the old one because you, you didn't allow me to put favor on you. I had to do it when you were faithful. Now I'm taking you out of the equation and because I'm faithful, <laughs> I will bless you. I will be your God. I will write them on your heart. It's what I'm going to do. I have made or I swore to bless you even when you... God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you'll begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you'd like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. If God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me. Lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on, repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong. Right now, I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.